Hello and welcome to another video and welcome to Holden Hills. So today we are in a big forest. Why have we come to a big forest? Because in a previous video, which I'll link up here or here, uh, last week's video actually, um, I talked about some of the things you can do to avoid location, well not location blindness, but um, being local and, and sort of not seeing the composition. So I thought today I'd put into practice one of the tips that I gave, and that was change your lens. So I thought what better place to come than a Bronze Age burial ground. So the area that, that we're in, Holden, uh, Holden Hills, or Holden Forest we call it, um, it's just on my doorstep and I come here all the time. So it, for me, this is quite a local area massive forest absolutely huge so the the area that we're in Holden um, stretches out miles and it's it's forests as far as the eye can see really and dotted around the whole area are all these big estates that um, were commissioned they were I think it was basically all the rich people wanted to be close to Exeter back in the 1800s I want to say maybe 16 to 1800s I think it was and they wanted to be closer to Exeter or in an area around surrounding Exeter and this is one of the areas and there's quite a few massive I think over 10 at least that I know of estates and they're all dotted around the forest. probably one of the hardest places to come for me to find a composition let alone with a 70 to 200 so this is my challenge is to try and get a decent image with a 70 to 200 and uh, see how we go the first I think the first composition might be this little bike trail actually I've got my first composition that I'm quite happy with and uh, I don't know how loud that is, it's like going by. So uh, there's a track that goes all the way down here and it's, it's kind of, it is an S curve but I'm not sure whether the camera is going to pick it up so well whether it blends in with the forest or not so what I'm trying to do is I'm taking this tree here and I believe it's this tree I can't see um because the camera's over there but I believe it's those two and I'm putting them on either side of the frame to try and frame the track going down into the forest and yeah I think it looks okay yeah so I think that's good so, so we're, at, so we're at F14, one second exposure, and it's ISO 100, and that's just stop the highlights clipping and the blacks crushing up, and I'll pop the image up on the screen. So 7.20 now, so we've still got quite a bit of light in the sky. Sun doesn't set until 9, about 9.20ish. Um, so I'm going to go and head that way, probably, um, and see what we've got. So yeah, it's quite interesting. I was thinking about the, uh, it's actually uh, been 30 plus years since I've come up, not since I've come up here, I've come up here quite a lot, but um, since I started coming up here before, um, before it became a, it's a, it's a massive place now and it's got like go ape and all sorts of stuff up here but before all that started um yeah it's, it's completely changed i might get that as a composition over there actually that looks quite cool 
doesn't look to the eye probably doesn't look that good but so I haven't had to walk far literally just turn the camera around as you probably just saw and my second composition that I've gone for is down here in the, the bottom part of the forest here so it's let me just get on this side of the camera and I can have a look yeah so so this bit here there's a little bit of light as you probably can see I don't know if this camera picks up that well just at the bottom of the trees there and it kind of looks a bit this one this camera is doing quite a good job of sort of bringing out the light but kind of looks a bit eerie spooky sort of thing and then you get to the end and there's a bit of light at the end and I quite like that it's quite nice so the two trees are in the foreground here I've tried to bypass those trees and try and shoot just into the darkness and get the tops so up here this the height of these trees I tried to get some of that in so yeah that looks quite good I think the blacks are crushed up but I don't want too much light in there I'm gonna show you the histogram quickly so you can see so they're literally almost crushed up so but they're not actually completely gone so I'm just taking that and we're looking at 3.2 seconds on f14 I'm just gonna give it a second to stabilize The reason I chose the 70 to uh, 200 lens today to, for these sort of images is because I tend to use, when I'm doing anything landscape, I tend to use a wide angle lens. I'm not very versatile with my lens choices. I kind of stick to the same lens and within that focal range, um, with that zoom range, sorry, with that lens. So I thought this would be an interesting challenge because I see photographers on YouTube all the time that use 70-200s on landscapes and they, I mean, they're taking usually epic mountain shots and they're zooming in, but um, um, I'm not sure what your thoughts are on using a 70-200 in the woods. Just please do let me know in the comments whether you use it a lot or whether it's something that's not done very often. I haven't, to be honest, seen a lot of uh, telephoto stuff in woods, but then that's maybe because I'm not looking for it very rarely do I ever think of it as a landscape lens and I think I'm just proving to myself that it's quite easily a landscape lens just as much as a wide angle so for me this is quite quite interesting well that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please do consider giving it a thumbs up it does help the algorithm and I do appreciate that and if you haven't already subscribed please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you get notified of the new videos as they drop um, if you like woodland photography, please do check this video out and I will catch you on the next one.